Tycoons are a major staple on Roblox. Where did it start? How did it evolve since then? Let's look into the history of Tycoons. This journey starts off in 2008 with a user called Uber Uber, which is the maker of Grow a Brick and the creator of Bread Factory Tycoon. But it's hard to kind of pinpoint a date when this game was made as the original game was changed into a mini golf game and looking through the Roblox blog posts and a fan WordPress site we can narrow down the creation date down to 19th to the 21st of January 2008 due to a blog post by Bryguy being made on that day. For being the first tycoon, it was ahead of its time. The game offered two jobs, one being a baker that bought machines to mix flour and water to make dough to then cook it and then sell it off to a truck for some cash. And then there was Repairman, who fixed any issues with the Baker's Tycoons that happens like stairs breaking with them also having an area that they can upgrade their craft as well. For the first Tycoon, this had a lot of features that modern Tycoons tend to use, with some I think were kind of useless, like an on and off switches for the oven and automatic flour and water dispensers. After this Tycoon, more came out with another by Uber Uber called Farm Tycoon and one called Teapot Tycoon by Fresh Baked Pie which allowed you to farm teapots and sell them for cash to expand your plot with a variety of seeds and expansions to make more money until you reach the end goal. In the same year there was also two player company Tycoon by Brickbuilder74 which was the first tycoon to offer two slots for players, one being a boss and the other one being a worker. The tycoon plays like one you would see normally, with a dropper that gives both players money, with it favoured to the worker and offering a selection of buttons for both the worker and the boss to buy, with some behind a wall that only the boss can access. One tycoon would push the boundary, which was your star tycoon by dude one, this was the first sandbox tycoon game, which essentially means you're allowed to build your tycoon how you want to and get money for doing it. How it works is you claim a star and equip the tool with your icon on it. This tool will allow you to access the shop area where you can buy new shelves for customers to purchase items from, get more staff or acquire more stock for the shop. The game was really well done, with the stock going in real time and allowed the user to customise their store to how they want to by rotating objects as well as expanding the store size, the car park and the sign. What I also like about it is that there are spills that can be cleaned up as well as robbers that try to steal stuff from your store make it feel like you're just running your own shop in Roblox. Or if you wanted to run something different, there was also Pool Tycoon by Den underscore S, which released the same year as Your Star Tycoon. This game has been updated through four different versions, with the earliest recorded footage from the first version of a user showcasing their pool, with glimpses into the background showing an empty plot and a different built tycoon. How the tycoon worked in the first version was with tools which I'm guessing popped up a UI for the user to click with items and prices which would then allow them to place it down. In the later versions the tools were removed and switched for purely it all to be worked into a user interface in the fourth version. In the game everything you built you got cash like pools, stands and rides allowing the user pure freedom in what they can build with these relaxed restraints. This led to some crazy creations with people working in the small space they were given. There were some different tycoons like Chakra's Zombie Defense with Zombie Desert Defense Tycoon releasing a year later. They are both fairly similar to each other which involves you killing zombies as your form of cash to build up your defences while upgrading your own selection of weapons. Both games still functioned fairly well, with Zombie Desert being a lot harder due to the zombies now insta-killing you if they touch you. Where both of these differ is in the selection of zombies 
as Sharker's version just has zombie, but does function very well with the guns still working, but in zombie desert defense. Most of the items are broken, but there are a wide selection of zombies, but the trade-off is that they can insta-kill you. Another different tycoon was Mining Tycoon by Defaultio, which was a fun game to play that is now broken, but there is an endorsed remake of this game that adds both a nostalgic and more modern experience. The original game is still there, but both variants change on how the Oz work in the game, with the original using circles, which are a lot more annoying to use due to the fact they can just tend to roll everywhere. As for the game itself, you had a wide selection of ores that you can find while mining, that then go through your system to gain some more value, and then into your truck to drive off to your second location to improve the ore to gain as much out of them as you can to then sell off your finds to the factory for some cash which then can be used to upgrade your equipment around your plant or can be used to decorate your truck as well. After this, the floodgates are open with a ton of new tycoons in 2009 and in 2010 with another sandbox style being called Company Tycoon which was more akin to the style we see today which has cubes that drop a ball down to the floor that gives the player a point which can be stretched and sized the same with upgraders and the objects in the game. There were also tycoons like Car Making Tycoon, Build a Kingdom Tycoon, Cart Ride Tycoon through a movie theater, Minor Tycoon that were more traditional with a dropper and buttons or just gaining cash through buying more items in the game. In 2011, one tycoon would compete to be the biggest tycoon, with it being called the longest tycoon on Roblox, which it had over 2,000 buttons. Compared to the other tycoons, that was an insane amount, which how it was done was using every single item in the game as a button, like lights, pieces of walls, legs to a table, you name it, that would be a button. That isn't to say it goes by quick, as you progress really slow in this tycoon, which could take ages before you reach the end of it. While the tycoon did perform very well, it did receive some controversy due to it using quite a lot of presets from the space kit provided by Roblox, but that didn't hinder its growth at all. As the years go on, Roblox is growing at a fast rate, and that goes to the genres on the platform, with tycoons being no exception, with hundreds being made focusing on something different to what the other tycoon is doing. So to compensate, I picked out some tycoons that made a big impact, that being player count wise, and some in the sense of being a major focus point on YouTube. Starting with City Tycoon in 2012, which it was made in 2008, but it gained a lot of traction over the years, with it being popular in 2012. City Tycoon was like 16 tycoons in one, as each player had a different tycoon across multiple areas that can be accessed via a GUI on the side of the screen. These tycoons were all based on different buildings, like banks, museums, hospitals. This adds a lot of replay value as each tycoon in the game was not the same. Currently, this game is closed, with a sequel still being open, consisting of 10 tycoons and an overall improvement on the tycoons themselves with how it's designed and the features, with some cool animations on the button and when building bar items. In 2013, there was Two Player War Tycoon which again, it was made in 2008, but gained a lot of traction over the years with it reaching 11 million visits. The game plays like two player company tycoon, with one being a builder and the other one being a worker, or well in this case, a fighter. Starting with the builder side, it all works around cash to then buy upgrades and then better defenses, whereas the fighter side costs kills to buy more weapons for the tycoon for both teammates to acquire. There is also a shop 
which everyone can access, with a wide variety of weapons costing kills to purchase, as well as health upgrades and items to keep you alive for longer. The game was fun and I remember spending a lot of time messing around with a selection of swords the game has to offer, but now the game is currently dead and I won't see that happening anytime soon. Then in 2014, there was Moon Tycoon, which has a nice space theme going for it. In terms of base design and the selection of weapon choices, with it being based around lasers and fighter jets to destroy your opponents with, and to capture flags on other planets around the map, that give a bonus of 75 credits over time. Other than that, there are some cool features like stands that can transform your character into what is shown. The objects you buy have a nice animation and it is a fairly long tycoon that you can sink a few hours into. Though there is some things I don't think work as intended, like the pickaxe which has no animation and I guess it was to hit the rocks that you see around the map but nothing happens. But this does show some age, with some parts of Tycoon bugging, but that doesn't stop it having a cult following among players. Then in 2015, there was two major standout Tycoon games that I think really changed Tycoons we see today, with the first being Miner's Haven, that is a sandbox Tycoon. This game is great, as the Tycoons before it focused on a specific thing, this was more of a factory, building droppers and conveyors with upgraders in the middle to get as much cash out of your orb before it reaches the furnace. The game had good progression, well, after a while it did as the middle suffixes of cash were painful to get through but once you reached 25QN, you were able to rebirth again which means your cash will get reset and so will most of your items but in return you'll get a rebirth item to help you progress faster and then repeat the cycle again and again. In the later updates, loot boxes were added into the game, which for the most part are not too bad as they require gems that are not too bad to obtain with the rewards being unique or exotic tier items that will stay in your inventory when rebirthing which the exotics are in for a small amount of time based on the update or celebration going on around the time it's released. Lastly, this is a common theme among some of these games but it had a good YouTube scene with content creators making videos on each update and what it brings and doing playthroughs on the game and setups to help improve players maximising the profit they get from the items they own. In the same year, there was Lumber Tycoon 2, which was a sequel to the first game but was heavily expanded upon, with the differences being in how big the map size is, the type of trees you can find in the game, and how the plot works as well. In Lumber Tycoon, we cut down trees, then sell them off to a store to gain some cash, that we can buy better tools and parts to make a conveyor system to optimise the amount of money we get from the wood cut. There are also different areas where you can find other wood that has a higher value like at the top of a volcano, swamp or a cave that is a maze that can be accessed via a ferry. What I like about this game is the sense of exploration, with different types of trees scattered around the map and shops with two across a bridge that specialise in furniture for your plot and cars to transport as much wood possible. There are two shops on the island that can be accessed with a ferry, one being a component shop, the circuitry that I don't understand, and a painting shop hidden in the cave. This is still like Miner's Haven in the sense of it being a sandbox game and offering conveyors to build like some sort of a factory. But you can also build whatever you want on your plot with a blueprint tool that draws an outline of objects that require wood to craft, leading to some cool creations with the blueprints provided in the star that you see in Spawn. Lastly, this game was also very popular on YouTube with playthroughs, tutorials on how to pass the cave and showcases of builds that were done inside Lumber Tycoon. In 2016, 
Theme Park Tycoon 2 would release, which was hard to pinpoint the date it was updated due to the fact the creator updated the old game that was made in 2012, so I had to guess from when YouTubers started making content around this game and from my own achievements in the game. The best way to describe this game is like Planet Coaster, but for Roblox. It has the same level of depth in that game, manage your own theme park with same prices on items, managing your guest demands by balancing having overpriced attractions or being very cheap or just finding that sweet spot where they just love it. The main start of this game is the attractions themselves, with the roller coasters having a robust system that feels like you're making your own ride, with a variety of twisted turns and banking that adds so much detail into your build that is wasted on me as I can't design a good coaster for the life of me, so I'll stick to pre builds that you can also ride on as well. What I do know how to use is the terrain tool which is just as expensive as building a coaster, with you able to alter each corner of the block, or the block itself, up or down, or even change the colour of it that can be later decorated with the variety of props in the game. Theme Park Tycoon 2 is fantastic, with it reaching 1.1 billion visits, only in the top 3 most played tycoons on Roblox. Then on YouTube it has so much content created around the game with some of the most insane creations just using the tools the game provides. In 2017, the most popular Roblox Tycoon would release. Superhero Tycoon 2, gathering 2.2 billion visits, pointing in the top 40 games on Roblox. How did they achieve that? For starters, on the YouTube side, there were hundreds of videos with some even having over 10 million views around superhero tycoons that would lead people to find the tycoon what their favourite YouTuber were playing. And they were also probably running ads as well on the game, but there is no real way to tell as I can't find any archived footage of that. So then, was the game good? Other than some parts, I think the tycoon is good which I find the map and tycoon to be underwhelming in terms of its design and in the tycoon's case, a bit uninspired. What I like about this game is that around the map you can find crates that spawn from the sky giving you a random amount of cash. There is a wide selection of heroes with matching morphs and weapons to the specified hero that are really well designed and look cool to use. I was playing as Batman so I tried to bring some players to justice, which failed miserably. Overall I think the main part of the game, being the morph and weapons, are really well done and I can see why people come back to this game over the many years to come. The next year we got the second most popular tycoon behind Superhero Tycoon 2 and that was Car Dealership Tycoon with it reaching 1.7 billion visits and growing. The Tycoon is great with it feeling like you're running your own car dealership with customers requesting specific cars with a set budget that need to be delivered off to a set location on the map. But in the meantime, you gain cash for showcasing the cars inside your dealership or just even driving them around the map. On the topic of cars, there is a wide selection that you can choose from with each car being able to customise that being just with colours or changing the rims, putting in a faster engine or even the springs. It's an expansive system that gives the player the freedom of choice. But the best feature is races with other players to show off the best cars that you have or to see who will be victorious. When I tried this, I brought the world's worst car possible and got outlapped fairly quickly. While at its core, it opts for a nice button system, the game offers so much content that gives you a lot of freedom to earn cash however you want to, and just is a lot of fun no matter what you do. In 2019, Restaurant Tycoon 2 would get released by Ultra W who has made multiple different tycoons up to this point, like the Clone Tycoon series 
and Pizza Factory Tycoon. What makes this stand out is, for one, it's their most popular tycoon, with it being in the top 5 most popular on Roblox, and then it's also my personal favourite tycoon by them. Compared to the first tycoon, the second improves on a lot of aspects, like for instance the animations in the game. Instead of going to IKEA for furniture, it's just simply there on demand whenever you need it. Then the big change is that you can cook the food yourself. As in the first game, it required a chef to cook the food. In this game, you can manage your kitchen and act as the waiter as well. The game itself is simple. Run your own restaurant with different foods from across the globe and multiple different designs you can utilize for your restaurant, as well as furniture that can be placed anywhere on multiple floors, which the first game only offered one floor. When trying to cook the food yourself, I like how it uses your mouse to mimic the actions you would do when preparing that dish, which adds to the experience of running your own establishment. One feature I do find quite weird in this game that is still cool is that there are cars that you can just drive around the map and scout out other restaurants to see how they've built theirs and how many customers are off to their place instead of yours. Overall, this is a great tycoon that gets you into the action of running your own restaurant and managing your staff while trying to expand the plot to make it bigger to house more customers and get more money. There is a similar game to this called My Restaurant that is, I'd say, more a simplified version, offering different customers who pay more than regular customers, a selection of dishes that you can unlock, and just having multiple flaws. Though they are both different, they have different strategies and gameplay loops, so it just comes down to if you prefer a simple game or something with more depth that is more rewarding. The next year, we would see another tycoon in the top 100 list, that being God Tycoon, with it gathering 500 million visits. This tycoon and superhero tycoon feel very much the same, but in this case I do find this to be an upgrade for the most part. In terms of map design and the overall look for the tycoon, while it also appears to have a lot more ways to get you to spend money in the game, like guns. I haven't heard of the High Almighty whipping out a Glock 18 to rain justice on people, but there's a first for everything. What I find Superhero Tycoon did better was the weapons, as for the most part of this tycoon, they felt okay, with some cool animations and attacks based on the god I was playing as, where in Superhero Tycoon there were more effects and used custom models for the weapons, which this uses items from the catalogue as its basis. And from when I used the weapons, it felt kind of weak, but then again it might be different per Tycoon, but the Ice Tycoon weapons looked like they did barely any damage at all. Finally, the length of this Tycoon is actually fairly short, with it not taking too long to complete, and it gives you a lot of time to play around with the weapons and morphs you unlocked from grinding your way up to the third floor to reap your rewards. So I can best describe this tycoon as short but kind of sweet with the selection of items offered and the variety of different gods are well tycoons in this game. Finally to wrap up this video it wouldn't be complete without tycoon kits that helped people create their ideas with an easy to use basis with one of the first tycoon kits I could find looking over forum posts from Roblox was by Wargod99 on the 4th of November 2008, which surprisingly still works today, which was the standard dropper tycoon you would see in 2008 and a demo selection of buttons. Then on the 30th of May 2012, Andy Muborn would release their tycoon kit, which had no dropping parts, with the player gaining cash every second and upgrades will boost the amount of cash they get and then to buy more buttons for their tycoon. On the 13th of October 2014, one of the most notable tycoon kits would be released and that was by Vereza, 
who had created some tycoons before and now released a kit that was easy to use and had a tutorial series on YouTube of him making the kit so you can see how it was made and understand how it works as well as lastly he is one of the main creators behind Miner's Haven and decided to make it open source as well so people can figure out how the game worked and implement a system like that into their own game with ease. The last Tycoon kit I'd like to cover is the most famous, by Z Gaming, which where you'll see some of the shapes used in this Tycoon kit a lot in other Tycoons, like the dropper and the collection pad, or even just the Tycoon shape in general. This become one of the most popular Tycoon kits, with its tutorial series on YouTube getting over a million views and a ton of downloads as the Tycoon scripts were very easy to use and modify, making so anyone can make their own Tycoon on Roblox. This also goes for tutorials on YouTube or on different platforms who helped people create their own Tycoon through tutorials, breaking it down how each part works so they can understand and improve at coding and truly get how the scripts function inside of their game. Thank you for watching, I'd like to know what is your favourite tycoon on Roblox, so feel free to leave that down in the comments or on my Discord server. Feel free to like and subscribe, as well as check out my join page if you wish to support the content I make. With that being said, I'll see you some other time.